This is Twit. We've got uh, two veterans of uh, science fiction, one of two of the greatest writers I know. Jerry Pornell, of course, has been on Twit uh, many times. We've talked about uh, Jerry's books, and of course, I really, uh, my career was inspired by Jerry's um, column, Chaos Manor, in Byte Magazine for many years. Chaos Manor's back. We're going to talk about that. But Jerry uh, is not in his usual den uh, with the wall-to-wall -wall books. You're somewhere else, Jerry. Where are you today? I'm in Lauren Niven's office. You, Larry Niven. Can you hear me? I hear you, and I love. Yes, I'm Larry a, Niven. Boy, I would love to meet Larry Niven. He, of course, your co-author for Lucifer's Hammer, so many great books, and uh, the uh, creator of the Ring World series and so forth. It'd be so fun. One of these days, you have to bring him on the show f uh, with you, will you? Uh, he's not. All right. <laughs> Done. <laughs> there he is, ladies and gentlemen. It's so nice to meet you, Larry Niven. Such a fan, and uh, so glad that you and Jerry continue to collaborate. I didn't realize you were still working on books together. Uh, we love collaborating. Uh, we go, it, it's how we get our hiking in. Uh, uh, talk story during during a hike. Really? It's not better than what we used to do, which was drink. <laughs> oh, you've gone healthy on us. <laughs> That's kind of cool. So you'll, in fact, a lot of people in Silicon Valley uh, do this. Steve Jobs very famously would take job prospects on a hike with him. Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. now does something uh, similar. I think... The mind, the blood is going, the mind's working, and uh, you're. And I think there's also, a, a, I read somewhere, a law that if you're distracted uh, by something, your, your, uh, your subconscious can work more effectively, and it's a more create, you are more creative. That's why you have great ideas in the shower. Uh, yes. Uh, hi hiking, hiking works, and Jerry's theory is that we're getting more blood to the brain. Absolutely. And, and until you start showering together, it'll probably be the best way to, pull, to collaborate. <laughs> yeah, we haven't done that. <laughs> so what That's are you... Probably uh, not, like. <laughs> not. Not in the not in the cards. Huh? What are you guys... We so you a sauna, though. <laughs> sauna? A very <laughs> good place to come up with great ideas. Yeah, Larry has a sauna. I love saunas. I'm a fan. So are you still in California, uh, guys, or where, where, what state are you in? We're in California, right. in uh, Chatsworth, California. Chatsworth. Right. Oh, it's the in. northwest corner of Los Angeles County. Yeah. So you're not far from home, Jerry. No, about in studio 20 studio, miles. Right? Oh, all right. So, uh, he used to be a little closer. He used to be in Tarzana, which was a very appropriate place for a science fiction writer to be from. <laughs> but <laughs> is, Wait a minute. Is Tarzana named after Tarzan? Oh, yeah. the apes, yes. Edgar Rice Burroughs, who was also a sci science fiction confabulist as well. The Burroughs family owned most of the land, and they developed it. So I had no idea. With the proceeds from the Tarzan books? Uh, yes. Uh, and, and the uh, related science fiction. He was the king of science fiction. In yes, day. he was. I know. And, the, and there is a display of Tarzan memorabilia in the Tarzana post office. I had no idea. <laughs> Yeah. I think you should uh, you should have a town called Lucifer Hama. I fear not. <laughs> not not quite so much. Uh, hey, uh, what what are you guys? Uh, Jerry kind of alluded to the fact that you are working on something new together. What are you working on? Uh, let me st start with a uh, conversation that happened during a hike. We were hiking with E.E. Uh, e. King, whom you haven't met, and uh, Stephen Barnes. I don't know, and Jerry and me. We were hiking, and, we, and the subject of uh, Lucifer's Hammer came up. And I presently admitted that I had always known how to save the surfer. Gil the surfer. And you, I have seen quotes that you say you wish you had saved him. Uh, if you've seen that, I'm not, I'm not sure where they came from. Okay. Because, because they demanded I save him, <laughs> write, a, write a story saving him. And... Uh, I, I kind of waffled and thought about it for a while, and I decided I didn't want to save him. Really? Uh, so, so what I've written is a ghost story. So, just for people who who, who haven't read, and you should read Lucifer's Hammer. A giant uh, comet hits planet Earth. It causes a huge tidal wave. Uh, the surfer decides if he's going to go, he's going to go with a bang and tries to ride the tidal wave, which would have worked fine had an apartment building not uh, intervened. 
Am I correct? Is yeah. that is that act an accurate that, sense? That's a good, succinct description <laughs> of it. Accurate in every respect. Uh, let, let me set a piece of stage here. The You understand that on a collaboration, we each do about 90% of the work. <laughs> but the surfer's all his. I couldn't have dreamed that up in a million years. So Nature Magazine a few years ago had a 30th anniversary of Lucifer. Oh. Oh, we hear Jerry talking off mic. We got to get Jerry back because his, uh, Larry, his Skype just dropped out. You're still there. Go slap uh, the back of his are, head. But you're not. Yeah. Come on, go sit next to Larry, Jerry. Mm. <laughs> Alex! Jerry's son, Alex, who is really a good yeah. IT guy. Both Larry Maggot and I know him from all, right. uh, all those uh, trade shows that he uh, does the IT for, including Showstoppers. Not yet. We're working on it. No, I don't see it. Uh, Jerry, he's hearing your voice, but... Uh, well, I'm hearing him from a distance. I'm hearing him through your mic, Larry. Your screen is showing something else. Yeah. His Skype is down. We only hear him because we hear him through your mic. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, through your... Through, through, ah. Far away! You're, you're, you're hearing mind. Jerry through my mic? Yeah, that's why we can yeah. hear him. His you can Skype just go into your... Here, you don't mind having fit it mic. If you guys can right. sign it together, you can, fit, you can share a studio. Here I am. Hey! There we go. We got him. Yep, okay. There you go. Okay. So Back to the story. Set the stage. Okay, so anyway, Nature Magazine runs this review of Lucifer's Hammer on the 40th anniversary of it or something of the sort. So we did a lot of science and technology in that story, right? Oh, yeah. So what is the first page of Nature Magazine, which is the world physics magazine what does it show? Well, of course, it has the surfer scene. <laughs> um, so everybody remembers the surfer if they don't remember another thing in the in the in the story. So um, now you know why Niven and I work together. I do the plots, and he does the the stuff people remember. I love it. Uh, yeah, it is. I was it is. Say. It is very memorable for some reason. You know what I remember most from Lucifer's Hammer, and I think I've mentioned this to you before, Jerry, is that when the infrastructure of the world is destroyed, as it is by this comet, it turns out that everybody has been using technology, but nobody knows how to remake it. That yeah. We're all, you. it's almost, for us, magical. And it really reminds me of the world we live in today, where, you know, we may be using iPads and computers and smartphones, but what we... We, could we recreate it if something should happen? Probably not. Well, yes and no. That and actually, the story Larry wrote, which may be a ghost story and may be real, has a good bit of uh, some some of the aftermath to it as oh, to good. what's happening. Oh, the, uh, it, it's certainly true that most of the people in this world, except fruits of technology in about the same way as a kitten accepts milk when you pour it into a bowl for it and are about as capable of recreating it as, as a kitten would be. But there are still some people who can do it. You well, remember there Lucifer's are, Hammer. Yeah. We did preserve the knowledge of how to do yes. a lot of that. Yes. Much of it preserved as books wrapped in Ziploc bags and thrown into a septic tank to hide them. But right. By, I could buy a wizard. <laughs> we turned one of our friends into a wizard. <laughs> well, I'm really glad to hear that there's more coming. When are we going to see this? And where? Uh, it's my turn, and I guess I'll need to get been playing with my new toy. You were talking about the Wall Street Journal. I had it on the screen here a minute ago. What is that? Uh, this is a session, or I'm sorry, a Surface. Oh, you got the Surface Pro 3, the new, the new Microsoft Surface. I have a Surface. Surface Pro 3, and I'm just getting to learn about it, so I'm not going to say too much now, but I love it. Larry, are you, Larry Niven, are you as much of a geek as uh, Jerry is? No, I'm not. I don't have the nerve for it. <laughs> as I say, as I w was telling you earlier, uh, I uh, I have a, per a perfectly good low heartbeat. Sorry, perfectly good low uh, 
blood pressure because I don't try to solve <laughs> machines the way Jerry does. It will put you... I watched, it, watched him for years. Uh, he always goes nuts. He goes into a flurry of confusion <laughs> and gradually works his way out of it much for, much more easily and much further than I could. Which ever. is why I read Chaos Manor each and every month in Byte Magazine. You said, Larry, that's, I mean, uh, Jerry, that's kind of coming back. What's the, what's the latest with Chaos Manor? When I learn this machine a little better, there's my Wall Street Journal. When I get a little more used to this, I'm calling it the precious, as in, oh, my precious. <laughs> uh, it, um, I, I, will, I will be doing so in, within a month. Good. Within, then I'll probably oh, we lost him again. And I hope he can figure out how to use Skype before <laughs> No, it's because we're it's because we're sharing Skype with uh, uh, Larry Niven and uh, and Jerry Pornell, and unfortunately, uh, Alex got yours working better, Larry, than he got Jerry's working. I'm, uh -huh. I'm sorry yeah, to say, <laughs> Larry, what do you use to write with? And it was agony. I watched the agony. It is agony, and you see, your blood pressure is already going up. Kick out, kick Jerry right out right now. If I were you, oh, and Christina's gone. The whole thing's falling apart. <laughs> The wheels, the wheel, the wheels are falling off the show. Larry Niven, what do you are you do write on a computer at least, right? Yes, I do. Jerry Pornell and a guy named T Tony Peach worked up a uh, computer for use by writers, and when he had it perfected, ah. he made me duplicate it, and I duplicated it twice because those were the days when you needed spare parts. What do you uh, what do you use Microsoft Word? What do you write in? Microsoft Word didn't exist then. Uh, yes, I use Microsoft Word yeah. today. Some for some reason, I imagine both you and Jerry using some ancient tech, you know, PFS Write or something, some ancient <laughs> technology. That oh, Jerry yeah. keeps up. Yeah, he, he keeps up. Yeah, keep but a, a lot yeah. of a lot of writers I know don't want to think about the technology. They want it to get out of the way. They just want to write. Who was it? Uh, George R. R. Martin uses WordStar. <laughs> yeah. This is the DOS the, days. This is the wizard of chaos manner you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, no, Jerry. He has to keep up yeah. even when, he, when a science fiction writer doesn't. It's, <laughs> it's so true. Hey, Larry Niven, I want to thank you so much for being here. I look forward to finding out what happens to Gilda Surfer, a ghost story. And yeah. uh, once, it, just, but you know, kick Jerry in the butt because apparently Jerry's just falling down on the job these days. It'll be a bigger story by the time Jerry gets to it. <laughs> is he the, He's got some other things going elsewhere in the world is he following the, Lucifer's hammer. Is he the wordy one? Uh, yeah, Jerry's the wordy one. <laughs> yes. I, I work angles, Leo. He, Larry has told a perfectly good story. It would be publishable now. But when I'm finished with it, it will be probably half again, maybe twice as long, and it will have some subplots in it that are not in what he has done. And I make them all come together, and then he goes over it and finds some scene that will, everybody will remember, and they'll forget that I ever had any part in it. But what the hell? Jerry's a filigreeist. He just adds the little, little Baroque detail to the... To the well, no, I'm, the, I'm the filigreeist. You know, that's close. And that's I'm the close. mad one. <laughs> uh, Jerry's entirely happy with the notion that I'm the mad one. <laughs> well, you'll he, have he to... Does the same, if, he does the sanity. You'll have to forgive me for being a little fanboy here, but I am so thrilled to get to talk to you. Uh, you know, Jerry, of course, an inspiration for my career, but I love uh, the stuff you do together and, and, and Larry Nevin's uh, ring world and all the stuff that you've done on your own, too, is just some of the best science fiction ever written and a must-read for anybody who hasn't yet. Just start with ring world and work your way through that by itself. Then, then start with... Lucifer's Hammer, The Moat in God's Eye. Jerry's even done uh, some young adult stuff, I know, uh, with, with this uh, theme. There's a lot of great stuff to read. And yeah. Ro and Roberta, right? I get some short stories. Is Roberta writing, too? Who's writing? Which, your daughter's writing, right? My Roberta daughter, is. Jennifer, has written Jennifer. A, a sequel to Moat, yes. So it's a family thing. I'm telling you, we're, gonna, we're working on uh, um, Moatville, USA. Ha, 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 ha.